हेलो एवरी वन सो दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द वीडियो विच हैज़ बिन रिकमेंडेड बाई वन ऑफ आर सब्सक्राइबर टू डिज़ाइन आर सी सेप्टिक टैंक सो विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द आई एस कोड एंड ऑल्सो हाउ टू डिज़ाइन द टैंक द स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व इन दिस ओके सो इन आर सी सेप्टिक टैंक वी हैव आई एस कोड टू फोर सेवन ज़ीरो पार्ट वन Uh, 1985. So this is the code of practice for installation of septic tanks. And in this part one, because it has many parts, in part one, they have explained the design criteria. and construction so if you coming to the terminology the effluent is the super superintendent liquid discharge from septic tank then we have a scum which is a greasy and other substances floating on the surface of the sewage and then there is another term septic tank which is a watertight single story tank in which sewage is retained sufficiently long to permit sedimentation so this uh, time is the detention period that we say which is from 24 hours to 48 hours which is also mentioned in this code so what is the scum and effluent if you uh, come to this term so i'll be explaining that also while going through the drawings so this uh, if you refer so this is bath tub we have water closet wash basin from there it will transfer to the septic tank okay then it will go for our secondary treatment or to the soil uh, nearby so this is what we are going to study today okay how to design this septic tank now they have different uh, Uh, tables where they have mentioned the probable discharge which is given in liters per minute so depending on this uh, volume you can design your tank so in table 2 they have given up to maximum of 20 users similarly they have also uh, presented for different residential colonies where the users are users means number of persons that are uh, going to use the septic tank so up to 300 then we have also for boarding schools and hostels depending on the number of users what is the probable discharge as per this you have to uh, design your septic tank capacity so uh, they have also directly if you refer the appendix they have directly given the recommended sizes but this is not exact uh, as per your need you can also increase the volume or the capacity of the tank so if it is up to 20 users they have given what is the length breadth and if you are cleaning the septic tank every one year this is the height or the depth of the tank you need and if two years then it is little more height okay so with this height you have to also consider 300 mm as free board so we will be uh, designing for this in this video i'll be considering for 20 users okay for where the length is 2.3 meter width is 1.1 meter and depth is 1.3 meter for this size i'll be uh, showing how to design this okay so these are the different recommended uh, sizes for again residential colonies up to 300 users and then for hostels and boarding schools so they have shown uh, what is the discharge amount and also they have given us the recommended size for that number of users in the code okay now so this is what i was speaking on detention time a septic tank designed on the basis of the uh, above clauses it provides a detention period of 24 hours to 48 hours based on an average daily flow of sewage so this is provided that means this is the time period in which this is time period in which sewage is retained 
sufficiently long to permit sedimentation okay so this is the time and the septic tank should have minimum width of 750 mm and depth of 1 meter below the water level and a minimum capacity should be 1000 liter so the minimum capacity that you are going to design the tank should have 1 liter capacity so if you uh, this is one plan uh, that is given in the code so this is the width of the tank which they have shown minimum it should be 750 mm and the capacity that means length into breadth into uh, the depth it should be 1000 liter okay then for the rectangular septic tanks the length of the tank shall be two to four times the width so this length of the tank so this is the uh, plan and this is the elevation drawing so this length should be at least two to four times more than the width okay when you are designing this you have to consider they have also for circular the minimum diameter should not be less than 1.35 meter and the depth should not be less than one meter okay then coming to the partition wall where the capacity of the septic tank exceeds 2000 liters if the capacity is more than this then you should have compartment or two chambers okay by means of a fixed durable partition the partition should be located so that capacity of the first chamber is twice that of the second chamber so the uh, first chamber length you can make twice of the length of the second chamber then you should have a suitable openings rectangular circular dia of 100 mm and maximum 150 mm so let us uh, design as per this so for this partition also they have given the code if you see so there is this is the partition wall which they have shown okay so there are two chambers chamber one and two similarly in you can see the um, section drawing so you see here in the first and uh, second in the chamber they are giving minimum slope you have to provide one in ten this is also present given in the code okay so this is given clause 4.1.1 that you should have minimum slope one in ten okay this is so that it will be easy for desludging that means when you are when after one year or two year the the, it, the tank is filled with sludge then you have time to take out this sludge okay now just i'll show here so for 20 users we were going to design right so for 20 users the length is given 2.3 meter and breadth as 1.1 meter and depth as 1.3 meter okay so plus i'll add free board of 0.3 meter which is 1.6 meter so let me draw this for example uh, this is our ground level okay this is our ground level I'm going to have okay so we have slope here and then this is straight so you'll be having a bottom slab here so I'm going to provide here slope 1 in 10 okay So this is your tank walls. Then you have the roof slab. So 
So what are different parts? The roof slab. And this roof slab will be having a rectangular manhole for the access so that you can open it and it will be useful when you are desludging or cleaning the septic tank. So this is the opening you will be having. If you want to have circular opening, 500 mm diameter and then you have to cover it with reinforced or cast iron. Okay, then manhole you have to cover it. Then you should have a ventilating pipe of 50 mm diameter at least this is minimum diameter and the top of the pipe should have a mosquito proof mesh okay so if you see here this is the ventilating pipe of 50 mm diameter okay and then you have this as mosquito proof mesh mosquito net okay so I'm going to provide a ventilating pipe with mosquito net okay now you will have a inlet pipe okay now this has to be covered with a baffle wall So this is a baffle wall. Similarly, you will have an outlet. So this is either to sewage treatment plant or you will have some uh, soil to soil also. You can give put the outlet. Now here also you can you will have a baffle wall. Okay, but this outlet, at outlet, the baffle wall is not mandatory. You can have or you may not have, but at inlet, you must have this baffle wall. So this baffle wall is necessary because what happens is, in this tank, at the bottom, you will have sludge. Okay. You will have the sludge at bottom. Then... At the middle portion, you'll have a clear liquid. Okay. So this is the three terms that we started uh, studying in the first terminology, sludge, then clear liquid. Then above, we will have the scum. Okay, this is, that means these are the floating, uh, floating uh, substances. Okay. So this will be floating. So they don't want that this should clog this inlet pipe. Okay, in order not to clog this inlet pipe, we should have this baffle wall. So that's why it is most important or it should be there at inlet. Okay, so this baffle wall is uh, 50 to 100 mm thick. It can be made up of concrete or uh, also plastic. You can put a plastic also. So if you s look at the plan, of the same tank if you are looking at the plan so you have this inlet and this is the baffle wall okay it's not uh, a complete continuous wall it is a small that covers the inlet pipe similarly you can have a baffle wall or the cover plastic cover and then you have the outlet okay this is the plan now So uh, coming to the length, it is given 2.3 meter because we are having uh, two compartments because uh, calculating the capacity, what is the volume of the tag? 2.3 into 1.1 into 1.3. Okay. So if I multiply, it is 3.3 meter cube. So into 1000, to convert into liters, so it's more than three uh, two thousand liter. So that is it is more than two thousand liter. We should have the compartment or the second component or the partition wall, right? Now, so if each length, that means the first length of this compartment. 
will be if I divide 2.3 by 3 because the length of this uh, second compartment should be half of the first compartment or the sec first one should be twice of that. So by 3 if I do I am getting 0 0.76. So let me divide the length as first I will make this as 1.55 meter and this as 0 0.75 meter. Okay. So this is my uh, length of the two primary and secondary chambers and coming to the width breadth I am having 1.1 meter okay and the depth is 1.3 plus 0 0.3 so if this is the water level maximum level this is 0 0.3 300 mm the free board and from here to this is 1.3 meter okay now this baffle wall which we are having it should at least extend 300 mm from the water level or tank water level so this also 0.3 meter okay now so let me take here we have a opening we'll have an opening here so this uh, we have stud studied that this opening should be the suitable opening should be there in a in the partition wall which should be minimum dia 100 mm to maximum 150 mm so let me provide this opening of 150 mm okay so now we have 300 mm and this wall is not a complete wall okay there this this means the um, the wall should be start from 150 mm then it continues till here because this space is called as ventilating space okay so this 150 mm opening i'm providing from then again we have 150 mm because total free board is 300 mm from here then we have a opening of 150 mm so let's this be 300 mm again i'm providing okay then after this this will continue the partition wall till end bottom okay so what will be the height here because total is 1.3 plus 0.3 is 1.6 minus 0.3 minus 0.3 so 1 meter minus 150 this is 850 mm okay so this is uh, we have the uh, drawing now how to design this so the outer what are the parts let me write down first so we have to design first is the roof slab then we have the outer walls tank walls right then we have the bottom slab and we have this partition portion partition wall okay now so the roof slab and the outer tank and the bottom slab is same as you have to design as underground water tank so I have provided the link of this design so this you have to design same as underground water tank that means the load will be here soil and here water pressure inside right you have to design and the roof slab there is uh, you can just provide a minimum load so like two-way slab you can design okay supported by on this 
walls on this outer walls right then the bottom slab the bottom slab you have to design you can give minimum reinforcement because the load is directly transferred to the soil around right there is soil so directly the load is transferred to the soil so bottom slab also so this three portion is same similar to the underground water tank the only thing is the partition wall so in this partition wall we have this bottom portion okay this bottom portion and then there is another is top portion okay so if i uh, show here this is your partition wall right so we have a uh, the bottom portion and then we have this top portion so in the bottom portion if you look at so you have this bottom slab right and you have this partition wall this partition wall so what is the load water pressure only okay because the sludge that load will directly transfer to the bottom slab which will transfer to the soil directly so bottom slab you have to, you have to just design like in underground water tank because the sludge weight also will directly transfer to the soil so this uh, water pressure so once this water pressure fills uh, in the primary tank then it, then it will transfer to the uh, secondary tank and the water pressure will start that means it will start balancing the water um, water pressure so it is better or the critical condition will be when it is the water is or the tank is filled at the left side so you have to design for this water pressure so rho g h okay for this depth which is 850 mm so let this be water pressure w so what is the condition for the outer water tank walls we have designed this as propped cantilever right the we have taken the moment as propped cantilever because of the roof slab present and it is fixed at the bottom in the partition wall if you see this is fixed because of the bottom slab but at the top it is free so it is like a cantilever so your moment will be at this the moment for which you have to provide the steel it should be half into w into the height h okay into this is h by 3 okay for this you have to calculate the steel okay steel formula you will use similar to the uh, outer tank walls the only thing is the moment will be the formula for the moment will be different because the support condition is different so like this you will provide the steel for the tank okay so it will be same as the outer tank walls the only thing is the load loading condition because in the outer tank walls we had soil in one side and water in the other side but here we have both water so you have to design for the critical condition when the water is at one right side only okay you have to provide steel so coming to the top portion if you see we have in the top portion we have uh, gap here right here it is uh, uh, there is a uh, opening and we have at the top also opening that means this wall is supported if you see here that means this uh, the upper portion is supported by the end walls okay at end walls so this portion so what is the uh, dimension of the top portion that means uh, this is 150 plus 350 okay 450 mm and the thickness uh, if you look at the thickness that we have considered as water underground water tank was 250 mm so let me consider 250 mm thickness so the wall thickness is 250 mm width and the height is 300 plus 150 so this is 450 mm so this is our size and the length is the 
width of the tank that is 1.1 meter okay so this is the size and this is your width cross section okay this is your cross section and this is your width of the or the length of the portion structural membrane so as it is supported at this two ends that means you have to design this as a beam okay so this portion you have to design as a beam coming to this the span by depth ratio if i check that means a uh, span is 1100 mm 1.1 meter which is 1100 mm by depth is 450 mm so this value is 2.4 so this value is less than 2.5 what is 2.5 if you refer the clause number in is 456 the clause number 29 is 456 so this is for d beam if your uh, span to depth ratio that means if it is less than 2 for simply supported condition if it is less than 2.5 for the continuous condition you have to design the beam as a d beam that means so the partition wall you are designing it as a as a a normal wall whereas the top portion this you have to design as a deep beam okay so that means the deep beam supported at the fixed at both ends which is supported at the walls because in the walls how the walls or the columns the load is transferred to the foundation right normal in columns or walls but in case of beams it has to transfer to the supports so if you see the a uh, structure how it is supported it is supported the wall so the load from the beam will be transferred to the walls then from walls to the foundation so this a uh, portion you have to design as a beam and as you see this is the ventilating space above this wall right so so this is a ventilating space here and so there is no load on the beam it has to be designed only for the self weight okay so hope uh, this video was useful for you so the the septic tank has to be designed like an underground tank and the partition wall has to be designed the uh, lower portion below the opening you have to design as a wall under the liquid load triangular load okay with fixed end at end and free end at the top and whereas at the the top portion of the wall that partition wall we are giving that you have to design as a deep beam okay so thank you for watching hope this is useful for you